Here we go. Hi, it's um, Alfred and Ros. For... Were, you, were you expecting me to say my name though without having told me to do that? Yeah, but I haven't told you so, you know, why would you do that? <laughs> um, and it's Cromwellathon again, and it's the first week of book two. Bring up the bodies and first two chapters. Yeah. Um, Just we... exactly up to page 100 in this edition, which was quite neat. Yes, yeah, very neat, very nice. Um, and this is going to be quite a quick one. Mm -hmm. um, just saying, yeah, how we think about starting book two and, yeah. and what's different and um, what we're liking so far. So, yeah. So Over to you. Why so, I think, like, so the first thing is that obviously in the start of this book, there's a degree of reminding you of what happened in the last book because when they were published, they weren't being read back to back. There was a big gap. Yeah. So that makes sense. But that is done in a very sort of clever and sort of well-structured way yes. because A, there's a lot of, in Wolf Hall, of cutting backwards and forwards in time and reminiscing about things that happened in the past. Mm. So it feels very natural and in keeping with the style stories being told that it's all reminiscing and it's kind of cutting backwards and forwards between different people reminiscing about different bits. So that flows very well in the sort of style of the book. There's also a degree of sort of mythologising. Yeah. So, oh, yes. Yes, that's interesting. So some yeah. of the stuff that's being talked about, they're being, that's being talked about and exaggerated in the telling. Like, you know, it was Cromwell really standing outside the jury room with a hatchet to make yes. sure they gave the right verdict. <laughs> no, but the story's good and, yeah. and it becomes part of the, his, his myth, exactly. his personal myth. That's a really good point. And uh, yes, because it, it is, it's impressive how she does you sort of catch up recap stuff. Yeah. Um, so smoothly yeah. Um, and um, yeah without it seeming sort of like, like without it being too obvious it's more obvious to us because we've just read the other book but 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 um, but yeah she gets away with it she does absolutely yeah. well done Hilary um, things that kind of carry over from the previous book to this one um, uh, we got again one of my favourite types of scene yes like the set piece of Cromwell going to visit um, Catherine or Mary, and so we get a Catherine seeing this one, and, That's very and good. it's a particularly good one, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. poor old Catherine is is sick, and quite significantly ill, isn't yeah. she? She's been ambushed with this person, and he's being yeah, she's holding her own despite him coming in with some very yeah. tough arguments. Yeah, with her. yeah, and and it, it, it's interesting because I think he does actually. To an extent, you just believe the arguments that he's using against her. Oh, I think absolutely, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and he can see the logic of them, but it, on a more personal level, he's 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 still very sympathetic towards her. I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. He's, you know, he's not an evil or horrible person. I think this mm. person is, you know, oh. sick and in pain and... Yeah, yeah. But he, ha he has to try because yeah. he's doing a job for Henry. Yeah. But he admires her... her Resilience. In, in he's also he's not just doing it for Henry. He's doing it for England yes. because, like, yes. she like the her arc threatens a war that it's clear that he doesn't think the country is ready to fight. Yeah, can't and afford. Can't yeah. afford, and yeah, would yes. lose probably. Yes, that's yeah. hard to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I don't know. Would they, I don't think they would have lost an invasion. I don't actually think so. And there's a thing in the previous book wolf hall yeah. where they're talking about that and like you know sort of chapuis and the emperor imagining that um there's the crowds will rise up and join them in the struggle when they almost certainly wouldn't no no because because although they may you know resent henry having got rid of catherine or whatever or, or not yeah. totally sort of support a shift away from being kind of very catholic very totally loyal to the pope nevertheless push comes to shove you know you take an englishman you have a, a spanish invader yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's that thing is that yeah. tudor promises they've been 50 years of peace yes and the the everyone in england knows what war is like and they yeah. don't no thank you no thank you Go yes away. the the there's the, the still a sort of a, a generational living, memory a generational of, memory yes of the, of civil war and yeah. that they don't want that yeah yeah, yeah. so um, another kind of carryover I suppose is in some of the um, the atmosphere the the you know food weather you know yes. that that sort of stuff and Cromwell's relationship with his um like apprentices well they're now they're growing up somewhere they're growing around up. him yeah I'm well, becoming quite statesman so there's a couple of bits here which I think is 
uh, Hillary responding to things that had confused people. Like, she explains what she means by costing someone up by looking at them and <laughs> linking that to him having been a cloth merchant in the past. And she uses he as in he Cromwell, like twice? Yes, yes she does. Like, obviously, the, so many people had said I didn't I'd had the first idea what was going on because whenever it was he and I didn't know. And, and I was almost sad the, that she did that. I felt yeah. like that was like a concession she didn't have to make. But at the same time, you know, it, like, probably, you know, it's like, it's, it's, there's no cost to it. It makes it easier for people to yeah. understand what's going on. It's like, yeah. yeah. And you don't need to be just be kind of like yeah. deliberately obscure for no yes, reason, I exactly. suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, Things that are different. In this book, so I, I think is that uh, she's getting we're getting more Cromwell's person with desires and goals and less Cromwell's instrument of state. Yeah. Like in particular, yeah. obviously, there's the, the scene in the tavern in the, in the second chapter. Yeah, yeah. It's like you would not have had in Walpole at all. I think like yeah. any sort of indication of anything like that. Well, we do we do early on kind of gathered that he and his wife are are sort of sexually affectionate yes but that's as far as it goes yeah, really isn't it she, yeah she dies like yeah. in the first chapter or second chapter of quite early on yeah there's nothing of that yeah 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 so yes you were you were saying that it, it, it's it's there's a little bit of raunch yes it. i think well, they're, they're they're kind of they're a bit more explicit about the henry's mistresses thing yes. Yeah, yes. then they, they were playing. No, no, that yeah. Playing, I say they, she was playing around a bit more. Yeah, yeah, no, that a bit more thought. Yeah, that 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 that's true. Um, my, what you get still in this book um, that we got in the book before was the sort of foreshadowing thing and the th and the thing where we know something that the characters don't. don't yeah. yeah, and um, Jane Seymour is the big vehicle yes. for that. Absolutely, and it, and and so we've got um uh like her father, father and, and bro brother and brothers yeah yeah kind of setting setting her up a bit like the Berlin set up Mary Lynn. Mary um to almost like pimp her yes. you know for the advantage of the family yeah, yeah. and they've also got them and Cromwell which is interesting because obviously we're from his perspective and so I've yeah. been very astute really underestimating her, which I think is absolutely, interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's almost like shocking that Cromwell is willing to go along with this sort of use of Jane, mm -hmm. um, but he kind of justifies it with the, you know, but oh, Henry's always really like kind of decent to his mistresses yeah. and, you know, make sure that they're fine afterwards, they get, yeah. you know, married off advantageously and on and all of that. But it's kind of something quite unlikable for me about Cromwell that he was oh, willing to yeah. contemplate it. And this I'm really liking the fact that I know that Jane isn't gonna have no truck with this. Yeah, she's yeah. gonna outplay all of them to an extent. And as you say, that she is they are underestimating her yes. intelligence and um strength of will, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. 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 Um and it, yeah it was interesting how um uh it, her father talks about sort of did, like teaching her to ride um but not any sort of not educating her really yeah. and and then she's quietly been sort of learning learning french taking advantage of being in the court so yes. so you know you just get little 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 messages it's, that yeah all is not quite she's her own woman yeah, yeah yeah yes but you do think blimey why doesn't cromwell spot that yeah you do. Um, yeah no. I think it's probably because he was attracted to her and then is now not and is probably thus maybe paying less attention or paying different yeah, kinds of attention. Yes, that's interesting. Like yeah, yeah, no, you could well be right. So, things are looking very promising yeah. for another splendid splendid read. Yeah. I have a feeling that this one is a bit um, kind of pacier, generally. Yes. And, and I would be surprised if it was. Yes, and I'm not sure that comes over in the first two chapters, but my memory of the, the book as a whole is that sort of kind of events kind of start rolling out. rolling roll faster. So um sure. we'll we'll come to that next week. Yeah, okay. Have a good week. <laughs>